radiology has to be one of the best medical practices and surgical practices to be involved in, I think. Uh, otolaryngologist is a specialist who's gone to medical school and completed a residency in ENT or otolaryngology. And we focus on medical and surgical conditions that affect the ears, nose, and throat. The common problems that we see are the things that people kind of know about already. Uh, the common ones are tonsil infections, ear infections, uh, where the specialists that actually do the surgeries if it needed to be done for those things. Um, we see a lot of sinus issues and sinus infections as well. The other things, we deal with hearing loss, with dizziness. We see a lot of voice issues and hoarseness problems. Um, any lump or mass from the neck up uh, is what we see. Basically, we look at anything except for the eyeballs and the brain, so, uh, and the back of the neck. So we also see a lot of people with acid reflux problems. Uh, they may or may not know that. All they know is they have a lot of <clears throat> throat clearing like that, a lot of hoarseness, uh, and it may be just a lot of cough. Uh, we see a lot of folks for cough too, and we try to figure out if that's from allergy, from post-nasal drip, uh, from a sinus infection, from acid reflux, or it may be asthma or something else contributing to that. ENT is interesting because we see a wide range of ages. We see people uh, all the way from newborns, one or two days old, that have a tongue tie, a little frenulum underneath the tongue, and they're having a tough time uh, swallowing or eating. And so they call us to, to see about releasing that or clipping the tongue tie. And we see people all the way up to their 90s with dizziness problems or with hearing problems that might need hearing aids. So we see both adults and children. As far as surgeries that ENTs do, again, the more common ones are going to be sinus surgery, uh, ear surgery such as tubes, uh, perhaps repairing a hole in the eardrum, uh, taking tonsils and adenoids out, uh, and also doing thyroid surgeries or parotid surgeries or salivary gland surgeries or biopsying lymph nodes or lumps in the neck. We also do a lot of nasal surgery too for breathing. Uh, such as straightening the septum, shrinking the turbinates, the radiators inside the nose, uh, and we also do surgery for sleep apnea or snoring. So to become an ear, nose, and throat specialist, you have to first go to medical school and pass, then you have to be accepted in and pass a otolaryngology residency. So that's usually five or six years of specialized ear, nose, and throat training. There's six of us otolaryngologists here at Eastern Virginia Ear, Nose, and Throat Specialists. All of us are board certified, which means we've all graduated from an accredited ear, nose, and throat residency program, and also that we sat for and passed both the written and the oral examination, very rigorous uh, according to the American Board of Medical Specialties, so one of 24 boards that's recognized as board certified. So as otolaryngologists, we see a lot of folks with nasal conditions and nasal complaints and sinus complaints. And the nice thing about our specialty is not only do we do the medical side of treatment as far as medications and different nose sprays and, and things like that, we also have the endoscopes to be able to look in the clinic to see if the nose looks like it's allergic, if there's sinus issues, sinus drainage, uh, or plumbing, or uh, blockage of the nose and we also do the sinus surgery too for those folks that don't respond. The nice thing is that for those folks that have allergy we do our own allergy testing and allergy shots uh, which brings relief to many many people. A lot of people ask what a typical exam is for ear, nose, and throat. Uh, for the first visit we usually take a look at the ears, nose, throat take a feel on the neck and that means going all the way down to the thyroid here to make sure that there's no lumps, masses, or tumors especially if someone comes in with hoarseness, with trouble swallowing, uh, those kind of things. Um, on the follow-ups we tend to be very focused on, on just the actual problem but again the first visit uh, may be a more complete exam so that we don't uh, miss anything that might be there. 
We do a lot of ear cleanings for folks too because we do the hearing tests, hearing evaluations. Uh, we have a microscope here in our clinic that we use to help gently clean any wax from the ear. Uh, since we're the surgeons that do the ear reconstruction and rebuilding of eardrums, should there be damage or holes, uh, we're exquisitely careful uh, to try to make that as painless and trauma-free as possible. So we work as a team with the audiologists here. Uh, on the ENT side, what we do is we look at the hearing, we look at the ear, make sure that there's no uh, fluid, no hole, no earwax in the way, no other causes for hearing loss to worry about. Uh, there are some medical conditions that can cause hearing loss such as Meniere's uh, or certain types of tumors on the nerve to the ear. But we look at that to make sure that, uh, that that's not uh, as big of an issue and then we do the medical clearance to let the audiologist know that it's safe to then let them uh, order the hearing aids for you. Uh, we turn you over to our audiologist here in our clinic uh, and they're the ones that actually do the ordering, the fitting, and working with you to fine-tune the hearing aid so that you get the best outcome possible. Sometimes we're asked what can make a visit go easier or better for the patient. Uh, the first thing is communication and making sure that you know uh, that we know what your main issue or concern is. So sometimes people end up coming to us because they're worried because they have a lump and maybe their grandmother died of a throat cancer or, a, or a, had a thyroid cancer. And again, let us know if that's the case because uh, we can certainly address those concerns and let you know what we think uh, right up front. The second thing is if you do have any CAT scans, sinus x-rays, MRI scans that were done previously, uh, it's always helpful to have those uh, or bring those in with you just in case we want to review those. And then the third thing is it's very important that if we do order x-rays or CT scans or labs or do biopsies that if we do that we always recommend people come back in person to get the result. The problem is sometimes those things get done and then we don't know if you had that done or not and if you don't come back and if the radiologist or the lab folks uh, didn't get those results back to us that's where there could be a problem where something slips through the cracks. And so what I don't like to have happen is someone go off, get an x-ray or get a lab result done, and then they sit at home and assume that because, gosh, Dr. Leonard didn't call, everything must be okay. So I always tell folks, please, please give us a call afterwards to make sure that the results are normal uh, and that the CT results are normal as well. Thank you. So why do I enjoy doing otolaryngology? I find it a very challenging and very interesting field, uh, but what keeps me coming day to day uh, back here are the patients. Uh, I really enjoy my one-on-one -on -one experience with them, uh, trying to listen, trying to understand what they're trying to communicate and tell me. Most people want to feel better, uh, but sometimes there's other concerns as well that need to be addressed. Uh, the second thing is if we can explain things so that they're happy with that, that goes a long way to making a big difference for them. The third thing is people want to feel better. And so with ENT, there's a lot of things that we can do, and I think it's a specialty uh, that we have a lot of happy patients with. So that's what keeps me going. I was lucky enough early in my career to be able to weigh what type of surgery specialty I wanted to go into. I initially thought about general surgery, but I really liked ENT as well. I was lucky enough to go and do a two-year tour as a flight surgeon with the Navy. I was assigned a Marine squadron where I took care of the Marine pilots and got them up flying again into a job that they loved doing. Almost 30% of what took those pilots out of their job related to ear, nose, and throat issues. That led me back to pursuing otolaryngology and I did a residency at National Naval Medical Center. Coming back and doing a residency at National Naval Medical Center was a dream for me. I had excellent mentors there and outstanding role models, people I wanted to be like. Uh, and I thank Captain David Thompson, who ran an excellent program there and had an unblemished record for over 10 years of having every single ENT resident who graduated pass their board certification on the first try. Uh, you certainly didn't want to be one of the first ones to fail under him, 
uh, and that motivated you even more to do a better job. There's a man 